All right, so just a few words about the article. So here is Ted Sider, Theodore Sider. Um, he's a metaphysician at Cornell University, or at least he was when I made this PowerPoint. Um, metaphysicians study uh, what the nature of reality is. So um, time is the supposed construct of reality or it's part of reality. So um, a metaphysician um, could study the philosophy of time. Okay, so what is time? Um, so our common sense notion of time is that it moves or flows in, in one direction only, forwards. Um, yeah, it moves in one direction from past to the future. So in that way, time is not symmetrical. It's supposed to move at a constant rate. Sometimes it doesn't seem that way, right? Because we say time flies when you're having fun or time, a watch pot never boils. So maybe it doesn't seem to move at a constant rate. Here's another feature of time. The effect always follows the cause. The cause is first and then the effect. So some people um, differ about what is more fundamental, cause and effect, or, or time itself. Um, you can take a class from Michael Tooley on the philosophy of time. He's a, a metaphysician at the University of Colorado Boulder, and one of his specialties is the philosophy of time. Uh, time is something that's measured by clocks and the rotation of the earth and, and all of that. So, so the common sense view of time is also called the A theory of time or uh, another way, the thing that some people call the common sense view of time is presentism. Mm, you might also call, yeah, I think presentism is a common sense theory of time or the A theory. Basically, the past is gone now. The only thing that's really real is now. The only thing that really exists is now, and the future is yet to come, right? That's really a common sense view. Yeah, even though the A theory fits best with common sense, most philosophers and scientists reject it. Uh, strange. Um, and, and this is, let me just say this just very basically. Um, this is the problem for the a theory of time, or time moving forward in some direction. It's in virtue of what does it move. Here's another way of saying it. How long is a second? How fast does a second pass? So these are some fundamental problems. And Sider um, illustrates it by um, talking about a picture of regular motion. So here, uh, here's a train. Mm. Okay, if these aren't the cities he uses, it doesn't really matter. So at noon, the train's at Detroit. Then it arrives in Grand Rapids, Michigan at three, right? So it's moved from Detroit to Grand Rapids. It takes three hours to get there. From Grand Rapids to South Bend, three more hours. From South Bend to Chicago, three more hours. So in virtue of what is this train moving? Well, the train is moving against a background of space. It's, vir it's moving in virtue of, um, it was in Detroit at a certain time, now it's in Grand Rapids at another time, now it's in South Bend at another time, then it's in Chicago. But here, here's the puzzle for the motion of time. Okay, so if time moves forward, the now keeps moving forward. So here you were at noon. Well, right now for me it's um, almost five. So at one point, now was noon. And then if time is moving forward, now becomes 3 p.m. And then now will become 6 p.m. And then now will become 9 p.m. Now the problem is starting to reveal itself. So in virtue of what is that now moving forward? Well, what Sider says is maybe with some, with, in virtue of some hypertime. So this is the, the hypertime box here. Some, and what he means by hypertime is some like higher, more, or, or lower, or more fundamental, um, more grounded version of time. Okay, so let's just go back to, yeah, so here's, Here's regular motion, so um, the train is moving from one city to the next, and here's regular time right here. 
Okay, now here's the present moment moving forward in regular time. In virtue of what does it move? Oh, here, hypertime. What the heck? Now, here's one problem. What the heck is hypertime? And then we've got another problem. So what is hypertime? Well, hi and what makes it time? And how fast does hypertime move? Well, hypertime moves um, in relationship to um, hyper hypertime. And how does hyper hypertime, you know, how long is a second in hyper hypertime? Or how long is a minute in hyper hypertime? Well, it's one minute in hyper hyper hypertime. And how long is it? And it goes on and on and on. And there's a becomes what they call a vicious regress. And fundamentally, there's no explanation for how time moves at all. Okay. Here's hyper time and here's hyper hyper time. Um, so if that is confusing, if that explanation is confusing, don't worry about it. This is the problem stated simply. If time moves, how fast does it move? And how would you measure it? And against what? It's, it's really just arbitrary. So um, um, A, the way time seems to move is by the present moving, by the present mo moment moving forward. Premise one. Premise two. If the present moment is moving, it must, has, it must have different locations at different times. But w in what sort of time does time move? So this is the puzzle uh, stated out. That these three, um, three propositions don't fit together. How much time goes by an hour? The concept of time passing can be considered to be um, internally inconsistent by asking, how much time goes by in an hour? An hour? How fast does time pass? A second, a second? So the definition is circular. How fast is a second? A second. So there's this problem of a circular definition. It doesn't get us anywhere. It's a nonsensical definition because the statement a second per second can be expressed as a fraction which is always equal to one, but this one has no meaning beyond being a number and is thus also the wrong kind of answer. Ooh, I like that. That's it, Ted Cider. <laughs> okay, so a solution to the puzzle, some of you might think the solution is worse than the problem, but it's just to reject the whole idea that time goes forward and that the present is now and the past is no more and the future is yet to come. The solution is, it just seems like time flows. Time doesn't really flow at all. Time is just, static. It's just here all at once. So Sider says time is like space in that there is a fourth dimension. So you've heard of this like the space-time manifold. This is also called the B theory of time or the four-dimensional theory of time where everything just is all at once. Here we go. So I can't draw a four-dimensional object but just pretend that all of reality are in this space-time block. This is all of reality, all present, all at once. I shouldn't say all present. All existent, all at once. The ways time is like space in the B theory. So objects at different places in, so objects in different places in space are both real. So I'm here in Las Vegas. You are there in Boulder, Colorado, okay? You're not less real than me just because you're not in this room, right? You exist, I exist, but we're separated by space. Okay, listen to how cool this is. In the B theory, objects separated in time are both real too. George Washington is just over there in time and I'm over here in time and we're both real and we both exist just at different places in the space-time continuum. It is a little bit comforting for relatives who have died. They just are at a different place in the space-time continuum. Yeah, so objects that are distant um, from us in space, China, the moon, are just as real as objects that are near to us. And objects that are distant, distant in time, like dinosaurs, are just as real as the objects that are close in time, like this toothpaste is real. 
um, the dinosaurs out there somewhere munching grass. Okay. Mm. Okay, on the A theory of time, only the present is real, only things in the present exist. We said that. Oh, and I've got a cucumber. That's for next lecture. Okay, so that's the difference between the A and B theory. That is um, Ted Sider's solution to this problem of time flowing. Um, so Sider addresses a few objections. I think the objections to his view are pretty dumb because they focus on the ones that he entertains. They focus on how space and time are different. And in reading them, I was kind of like, well, duh, space and time are different in that way. You could explain this in a four-dimensional universe pretty easily. So I'm not going to go through all that. And then he ends the article talking about uh, two science fiction movies, Back to the Future and Terminator. So I'm not going to talk about those here. Um, hopefully we'll talk about those time travel movies later when we talk about time travel. So I hope that this helped you clarify Ted Sider's article. Um, yeah, have a good one.